Welcome everyone to the IFRS course. As of July 2024, there are 17 IFRS International Financial Reporting Standards. I'll give you a brief and simple explanation of each one, along with an example to help you understand better. Some standards have been replaced or are no longer applicable, and I'll mention that as well. IFRS 1, First Time Adoption of International Financial Reporting Standards. Explanation. This standard helps companies transitioning to IFRS for the first time. It provides guidelines on how to prepare their first set of IFRS-compliant financial statements. Example, imagine a company in the UK switching from local GAAP to IFRS. IFRS 1 guides them on how to make this change smoothly. IFRS 2, Share-Based Payment. Explanation. This standard deals with transactions where companies pay their employees or suppliers with shares or share options. Example, a company gives its employees stock options as part of their compensation. IFRS 2 explains how to account for these options. IFRS 3, Business Combinations. Explanation. This standard covers the accounting when one company acquires another. It provides guidance on how to recognize and measure the acquired assets, liabilities, and any goodwill. Example, when company A buys company B, IFRS 3 tells company A how to account for this acquisition on its books. IFRS 4, Insurance Contracts. Explanation, this standard provides guidance on how insurance contracts should be accounted for in financial statements. Example, an insurance company sells policies to customers. IFRS 4 guides how these policies should be recorded in the company's financial statements. IFRS 5, non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations. Explanation, this standard deals with assets that a company plans to sell and operations that have been discontinued. Example, if a company decides to sell a factory, IFRS 5 provides guidance on how to classify and present this factory in the financial statements. IFRS 6, Exploration 4 and Evaluation of Mineral Resources. Explanation, this standard provides guidelines for companies involved in exploring and evaluating mineral resources. Example, a mining company explores a new site for gold. IFRS 6 guides how the costs and activities related to this exploration should be accounted for. IFRS 7. Financial Instruments. Disclosures. Explanation. This standard requires companies to provide information about financial instruments, such as loans, investments, and derivatives, in their financial statements. Example. A bank holds various types of investments. IFRS 7 ensures the bank discloses enough information about these investments for users of financial statements. IFRS 8. Operating Segments. Explanation. This standard requires companies to report financial information about different business segments within the company. Example, a company operates in both retail and manufacturing sectors. IFRS 8 guides how to present financial information for each segment separately. IFRS 9, Financial Instruments. Explanation, this standard deals with the classification, measurement, and recognition of financial assets and liabilities. Example, a company invests in bonds. IFRS 9 guides how to classify and measure these bonds in the financial statements. IFRS 10, Consolidated Financial Statements. Explanation. This standard provides guidelines on how a parent company should prepare consolidated financial statements, including its subsidiaries. Example, a parent company owns several subsidiaries. IFRS 10 guides how to combine the financial information of all these entities into one set of financial statements. IFRS 11, Joint Arrangements. Explanation. This standard deals with arrangements where two or more parties have joint control. Example, two companies jointly control a new venture. IFRS 11 guides how to account for this joint venture in their financial statements. IFRS 12, Disclosure of Interests in Other Entities. Explanation. This standard requires companies to disclose information about their interests in subsidiaries, joint arrangements, associates, and unconsolidated structured entities. Example, a company has investments in several other entities. IFRS 12 ensures the company discloses detailed information about these investments. IFRS 13, Fair Value Measurement. 
Explanation. This standard provides a framework for measuring fair value and requires disclosures about fair value measurements. Example. A company needs to measure the fair value of its investment property. IFRS 13 guides how to determine this value. IF 14. Regulatory deferral accounts. Explanation. This standard allows first-time adopters of IFRS to continue to account for regulatory deferral accounts in their financial statements. Example. An energy company with regulatory deferral accounts adopts IFRS for the first time. IFRS 14 allows it to continue recognizing these accounts. IFRS 15, Revenue from Contracts with Customers. Explanation. This standard provides a single, comprehensive model for accounting for revenue from customer contracts. Example. A software company sells a subscription service. IFRS 15 guides how to recognize revenue from these subscriptions. IFRS 16, Leases. Explanation. This standard requires lessees to recognize almost all leases on the balance sheet as lease liabilities and corresponding right-of-use assets. Example. A retail company leases store space. IFRS 16 requires the company to record the lease as a liability and an asset on its balance sheet. IFRS 17, Insurance Contracts. Explanation. This standard provides a comprehensive framework for accounting for insurance contracts, replacing IFRS 4. Example. An insurance company issues life insurance policies. IFRS 17 guides how to account for these policies in the financial statements. This covers the 17 IFRS standards as of July 2024. Keep in mind that some standards may have been replaced or updated, and it's important to stay current with any changes in the regulations.